And you guys don't see it, but Pete DeBoer did an interview with Jackie Redman on TNT that they switch over for our broadcast so we can kind of see everything. Okay. And he said it. He said the next goal is absolutely crucial. And this is when it was 2 nothing. And I, I just thought, like, he is so bang on. I think if that game goes to 3 nothing, we're we're not – we're, you know, having a different conversation this morning. But I thought Skinner showed some good composure. I thought Nursey showed good composure. And I think the forward core really picked up the slack, the middle of the lineup. Corey Perry, I mentioned on TV met multiple times because um, that game could have gone down the, down the pipes real quick. And yep. um, they, they, uh, they figured it out. Well, Luke, yesterday afternoon in that media veil where Dry said or uh, Darnell Nurse said, uh, you know, ten words in total, and and people are losing their minds, and you know, Knobloch's making all these decisions and choices and fiddling with everything. But again, the Midas touch comes through. I just wanted your thoughts on him, and and I know that you've always professed that that he's a guy that keeps things on the level. They're never high, they're never too low. He's always kind of composed and, and quiet in that. Um, but your thoughts on his lineup changes yesterday. I mean, we we talked about Broberg once in the opening hour of the show this morning, which I think is a, a W for him in that core. Nurse obviously coming back, doing what he did with the hits. And then you look at that goal, that, that, that Ryan McLeod goal uh, from Perry and Nurse. I mean, it just kind of all came together with what Knobloch did prior to the game and setting that lineup. Yeah, so before game three, we had our pregame show ready and we had just found out that he was taking out Ryan McLeod. And I remember thinking that I didn't love the decision. No, I mean, he hadn't been producing offensively, but he was a huge part of the penalty kill. And yeah. I thought there were some other guys that maybe should have come out before him. But I stopped myself and I even said on TV, like, I have learned to trust Chris Knobloch yeah. and whatever lineup decisions he makes. He's a smarter man than I am. I sat there in front of the laptop yesterday and tried to construct my own lines. And I was just like, who goes with who here? And he just has such a good pulse of the team. He seems to know who plays well with who, who's going, who's not, uh, potential line mates and who could play well together. And the lineup, we get the lineup live on the show. So we circle back towards the end of it. And I just remember looking at it going, Wow, this is this is wild. Like you yeah. have two <laughs> brand new lines here in game four of the conference finals. And putting in Broberg, like, listen, I, I talked to you guys. I was not a fan of it. I, I was not on board with it. And then I had about a half an hour chat yesterday with Colin Chalk, who's the head coach of Bakersfield, and he completely changed my mind. Um, he just told me how far he'd come in a short amount of time, how composed he was, how ready he was for it. Um, and I thought the kid had a great game, like he played 13. I didn't think he was going to play more than 15. So it was right around where I thought he was going to play. Um, but you didn't notice him in a bad way. Exactly. Right? And I think that's like the, the biggest thing is there were no glaring mistakes. He didn't do a ton offensively, but some good first passes, some good shutdowns in the D zone. And, and I thought he stepped in and did a good job, but to scratch Vinny, like, on his birthday, too, I mean, a, a guy that's been a, a consistent physical presence and a pretty consistent player for them, um, it's a pretty ballsy move. So I've learned to trust KK and and what he wants to do with the lineup because ultimately um, – he, he's made some really good moves. Luke Gazdick with us from Sportsnet and his Mits Off podcast brought to you by Pro-Am Sports today. When Darnell Nurse plays like he did last night, and I mean, he's not going to go out and drop a dozen hits on you every single night, but when he plays like he did last night, they can win the Stanley Cup, right, Luke? Like, that's not even an over-exaggeration. Like, when he plays as well as he did last night, that's that's how much of a difference maker he can be, right? Yeah, let's talk about Nurse here for a second. So, um I, I didn't love his media avail yesterday either. Um, I don't know if he was forced to do it or if that was calculated. I didn't love the way he came off, but I will tell you, I understand where he's coming from. Um, all media, especially, you know, here in Toronto, you see it, loves to, after a loss, pick on one player in particular. And Darnell is an easy guy to pick on because he makes a lot of money and he's probably not playing up to that salary. But I consistently tell people to put the salary aside for a second, okay? Except that he's making nine and a half for the next five. Like it's it's happening. He's in, he's He's not going anywhere. So try to rate his game outside the salary. And I try to reinforce to people that these guys are human beings. Like... I, I see a guy in Nursey that cares so much about his team behind closed doors. And I think people forget that 
these guys take the, this stuff really hard also. Like he's ha probably having a really tough go away from the rink. And I know you didn't like the way he came off. And I think he said it happens because they had a bad period. I'm not going to lie. Bad periods happen. It shouldn't happen in a conference final. Um, you probably shouldn't say that it happens, but sometimes you get in front of 30 cameras and people are looking at you and demanding answers and stuff does not come out the way you want it to come out. I have didn't have a ton of scrums like that, but I can tell you it is, it's a nerve wracking experience being in front of 30 cameras and microphones in front of your face, demanding accountability and wanting to hear certain things from them. And sometimes stuff just doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't come out the right way. It doesn't sound the way you want it to. And you really only have one crack at that. You can't pull all the media back and say, Hey, I, I, I didn't mean to say it that way. You're not going to go on Twitter and say, Hey, something came off today. So I, I understand that. And I, I just thought, people got all all over him in particular when there was a number of other guys on that team that that blew that lead uh in game three on top of him but it couldn't have started any worse for him i know too. like um, minus two one goes in off your ass minus, you're like holy smoke i think he went to the bench too he went to the bench after the second and he muttered a couple of f-bombs as well just yeah. shaking his head and you know how is this happening yeah I mean, it's, it's like the first one, it's a, it's a two on one where he really isn't able to gap up. All he can do is take away the shot and Wyatt Johnson puts it pretty much bar down. And the second one goes off his, uh, off his leg or his butt and in, and I just thought on top of the team, I said composure before, but I thought he showed good composure. You know, you can crawl into a hole and just go glassing out for the rest of the game. And I, I, I thought he sh showed some good perseverance and in jumping back into it. How much, and we'll see what happens here with Tanev. But that's a series changing type of injury, isn't it? If if he like, Yeah, like if he if he can't go significantly series changing, and even if he does go, he's clearly gonna be banged up. That's one of those moments, right? Look, like this is one of those moments where a series could definitely swing in the Oilers' favor. Uh, I one hundred percent agree with you. I saw the shot block and I, I you know, I make notes during the game and I just I, I wrote great block, Tanov, and then you see that he was in a lot of pain, which is weird because where it hit him all the guys, including him, wear shot blockers there. And those shot blockers are like, oh, man, you can take a 100-mile-an-hour clapper off them sometimes and not even feel it. Um, and I said to Kev, we almost said it to, to together instantaneously, if Chris Tanev can't play through something, then you know it's bad. Because yeah. that guy will play through anything. And even in the third period, I thought their decor looked deflated. Petrovic, probably good kid works hard well well liked by his teammates but he is not the guy to pick up the slack for chris tanov on the right side of that dallas lineup so we'll see how it goes here in the next couple days but uh make no mistake man that if he ends up being out is a huge loss for their team this thing's going seven isn't it just with the way it's been so far don't you feel seven like yeah yeah it's looking that way um Honestly, with within like the micro and the macro, I, I don't know which Oilers team is going to show up and when it's uh, about as frustrating as it gets. But it, it has the makings of going that way, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Where where um, there's just there's not too much room out there and it's just two really good teams. And I think seven games would be appropriate for this one. Luke, I just wanted to get your thoughts. Who do you think is winning the depth battle right now? We came into the series and we look at the stars, we say, and, and rightfully so. The four lines, they roll out, they can all play skillful, all that mentioned. We know this. The Oilers, that was a bit of a concern. We know the top dogs. You look in the bottom six, you can maybe argue, okay, well, it doesn't really line up uh, aesthetically to the stars. Um, but I maintain, too, I don't think depth should be defined as necessarily just point output. We've seen what the PK has been doing. Uh, Yan, Mark, Perry entering the play last night, and Connor Brown, another guy that was maligned through the season and maybe rightfully so for what he produced. But uh, three-game point streak now, turning it on. Just wanted to get your thoughts on the depth and who do you kind of see right now. And again, as we said, probably going seven. It's even best of three now. But who's kind of winning that depth battle uh, by your definition? Yeah, it's a great question. Sick hat, by the way. I'm a Padres guy as oh, well. Yeah, like the Pod yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right on. Me. I, uh, I went to Petco a couple times when I played there. It's unreal. Yeah, um, you were there. Honestly, yeah, we, we were texting about it. Yeah, oh, yeah I was yeah. there last month. It's awesome. 
beautiful ballpark. Yeah. You can, but you could probably make the argument that it's that it's the Oilers winning it, and if they carry on forward, going with a third line of Evander Kane, Adam Henrique, and Dylan Holloway, then I think there's a real chance they can win it. I like how you frame that too, in the sense that I don't think the fourth line yesterday had an incredible game, but to do what Brownie and Yamark did on the penalty kill almost makes up for it, right? Like yeah. 20, 23 PKs in a row now, uh, eight games in a row now without allowing a goal. And that is attributed to a ton of depth forward to play on that penalty. Kill. And, and now they're scoring yeah. shorthanded. It's, I mean. it's incredible. The boost you can get from a penalty kill that produces offense is un unreal. And listen, Dallas is still going to roll their four. They still have um, some, some really good players in, in the bottom end of their lineup and call it, you know, their bottom nine if you want to. But I think Edmonton's winning it right now. And there's a pretty good argument for that. I still, I know I say, I feel like I say this to you guys every time, but I still want Sammy Carrick back in that depth. I think he brings a little more than DR right now, but um, they're, they're winning that battle right now. And, and it's good to see. Guys, as always, man, we appreciate it. Continue, uh, continue the good work. We'll chat next week.